Well, the Blue Jays come away with the one nothing. 12 inning victory down there in Texas. And if I sound a little off, guys, I'm feeling sick. I'm not feeling the great. It's been a rough day. But here we are. And the Blue Jays. It was a pitcher's duel for both teams. And it took. And guys, let me just. Uh, it took an error by the Texas Rangers for the Blue Jays to win this game. We've heard that before, haven't we, people? You know, we're not going to talk anything pitching-wise right off the start here. We're going to get to the one run that we did score in the top of the 12th inning. And let's get to that first because the Blue Jays, you know, really didn't have anything going up until this point. They've been horrendous with runners in the scoring position all night long. Both teams have. But the Jays specifically have had plenty of opportunities and have not cashed in. They bring in the 23-year-old Gerardo on the, on the mound, and Brandon Jury has a good at-bat, and I think it was like an 0-2 pitch, and he stays on the pitch, down and away, and kind of hits a nice soft line drive into right right center field for a base hit. Great job. Way to start it off. And Teoscar Hernandez grinds it at-bat for at least eight pitches. At least eight pitches. Uh, and then he rips a single up the middle, and we got two on and nobody out here, but we have seen this before. Danny Jansen up at the plate. You want him to bunt because you bunt those two guys over. Then you have Sogard and uh, Freddie Galvis there looking to get that, 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 that go-ahead run across the plate. Danny Jansen bunts once, foul, then takes a strike, a borderline strike, but it was a strike, I guess, on the, at least called by the umpire, and it was an 0-2 count. He bunts again, 0-2. He gets it right back to the pitcher. Gerardo fields it. He fires a third. It's wide and into the seats. You know who comes in to score. Brandon Drury comes in to score. Hernandez moves it to the third because he was going to play a two-base error. Drury moves over. Or, sorry, uh, Hernandez moves over. And uh, Jansen moves up to second base. The Jays have runners at third, second and third. Nobody out. And a one nothing lead. That's right. They had second and third. Nobody out. In the 12th, even though you took the one nothing lead, you wanted to get some insurance runs. Nope. It literally was just an error that won the game for the Blue Jays, but who cares? Now let's get to the fun stuff. The pitching. And the starter in tonight's game, who at some point, like the 11th, I'm like, who the heck started for the Jays? Oh, oh all right. Trent Thornton. He was spectacular. This is the first time I think this year we've seen Trent Thorne straight up dominant. He threw seven innings, walked only two guys, was locating his fastball beautifully, gave up one hit over those seven innings, no runs, and struck out five. He was incredible. I really, really liked what we saw from Trent Thorne. If that's something we're going to see on a more consistent basis, I kind of like what we got there in Trent Thorne. And just a refresher for you guys. The way we got Trent Thornton was a lead Miss Diaz being moved to the uh, Houston Astros this offseason. The Jays acquired Trent Thornton uh, in exchange for Diaz. But then Tim Mesa comes out for two-thirds of an inning, gives up a hit, but gets a strikeout and gets through two-thirds of that. And Joe Biagini comes out for an inning and a third, no hits, and a strikeout. Good job for Big Joe. Ryan Tapera runs into some big problems, gives up a leadoff double to uh, Elvis Andrus. Then, uh, then he walks a couple guys. Base is loaded now, and he finds a way to get out of it. I mean, I don't know. I, honestly, I, I gotta get up early tomorrow, so I, I was kind of saying, all right, let's just let's just end it. Like, I just want to go to bed now. And then he gets out of it, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ryan, like, come on, man, you're not really helping out here. Sorry, guys, I apologize for that. Uh, like I said, I'm feeling not the greatest, so just bear with me there. Um, but he ends up getting out of the inning, and then in the uh, bottom of the 11th inning, Daniel Hudson comes out, gives up a hit, no, and walks about her butt, gets out of the inning, and again, I'm like, ah! <laughs> we go to the top of the 12th, and all that shenanigans happens in the 12th inning. The Blue Jays take the one run, and then you go to the bottom of the 12th inning, and Ken Giles comes out there and strikes out the side. Strikes out Joey Gallup, Ezra Cabrera, Danny Santana. See ya. Good night, people. Good night, jam-packed. Uh, you know, Arlington, Texas, because it was not very jammed, and when the rain started coming, there was nobody in the stands, at all, <laughs> it's quite funny, actually, to watch that, but, but you watch the Blue Jays, right, and they pitched 12 innings, right, 
They gave up four hits over 12 innings. That's spectacular. Now, you were kind of hoping that the Blue Jays would not have a game like today. Because tomorrow, we don't know who's pitching. I think the, the, the consensus is probably going to be Thomas Pannone and then probably Sam Gavilio as well. Kind of mix those two guys in. You got like three innings per guy, maybe maybe four if they're, if they're dealing. But I think that's the plan there for tomorrow, uh, uh, tomorrow night's ball game there in Texas. Because obviously the fifth man in the rotation has not been a problem for a while, but... Since Shoemaker went down, obviously that was the whole you know thought process. What are they going to do when that when that when that fifth spot comes around and it's going to be an issue? Now is that time. So we're going to see we're going to see from Charlie uh, who the starter is going to be for tomorrow night's game. Uh, my guess is Thomas Pannone, but uh, again nothing's been guaranteed as of yet. It'll probably come out in the very near future here. I mean when he does his post game conference, he'll probably you know let you guys know or let everybody know what who the starter is. So you guys will know that by the time you watch this video. But the bottom line is the Blue Jays pitching today was I I incredible. You know, and you look at guys like Daniel Hudson, right? A guy who had a horrendous start to the year. Gave up the uh, the, the the big extra inning home run there. He was in the first game of the year, right? In his first outing, we're like, man, this guy sucks. And he was terrible for quite a while there. And he had a 10-plus ERA, and he was doing a terrible job. But he has done an amazing job lately and got that ERA down to 3.68, and he has done a great job locating his pitches. I really like what Daniel Hudson's done. Tim Mays has been pitching the ball a lot better lately. Joe Biagini has an ERA of under 3, so I don't care who the heck you are. That's damn good for Big Joe. Tapera, well, it's still 5.68, but again... It's very limited outings, so if he throws another clean inning or two, it'll drop into the fours and then in the threes, and they'll be like, oh, okay, well, this is more like it, right? So, But for Ken Giles, with picking up his, uh, what save is that for Ken Giles? I think it's his uh, eighth save, ninth save? What, what is that for Ken Giles this year? Uh, his eighth save on the season. ERA of 1.76. If he can use a pitch like this, all-star game? I mean, numbers don't lie. You know, a whip of 1.17. An ERA of 1.76. He's blown one save out of eight opportunities. And he'll continue to do great things because he's an amazing pitcher. And I think I'm starting to fall in love with Ken Giles as, a, as, as the Jays' closer. He's doing great. He has energy. He's got a great fastball. He's got great off speed. And he gets the job done. That, they, they, that's the key, right? Because last year we were all over the place. We didn't know who the heck our closer was. They tried Ryan Tapera. They tried um, <clears throat> all kinds of other guys. Then you make that trade to... To get Ken Giles, and it kind of stabilizes that position. I really love what Ken Giles has done since coming over to the Blue Jays. But with the bats, I mean, like I said, the Blue, the Blue Jays do get 11 hits in the ball game, but they couldn't hit with Anderson's scoring position at all. First inning, you have guys at second and third, nobody out, can't do anything. Third inning, I think the runners are first and second with one out. I think it is, can't do anything, right? And then the rest of the game, you have guys at second, can't do anything. Right? It, it was a consistent thing over and over and over again for this team. The entire game. Yeah. Eric Sogard went two for four. Freddie Galvis two for five. Grichik went two for six in the ball game. Vladdy went one for five with an infield single. Uh, Rowdy Telez went one for five. Brandon Drury went two for five. Hernandez went for two, and or sorry, one for five. That one for Teoscar was a huge part of the ball game. He, he grinded out that at bat there in the 12th inning and punched the ball through the middle. Amazing at bat by, by Teo. Um, and that's about it for the Blue Jays. I mean, look, the, the, the damage really was at the top of the lineup. You get six of the 11 hits from your first three guys in the order. But the run does come home. You know, your meat of the order guys really didn't get anything done with runners in the scoring position. You look at le guys left on base. Listen to this. Where are we here? Uh, Grichik left four guys on base. Smokey left seven guys on base. Ideally, he did leave three on there in the 12th inning, so you want to kind of base it off that. And Vladdy left three three guys on himself. So that meat of the order really didn't get the job done today, but you got the win. They grinded. They pitched really well. And they won the ball game. Plain and simple. All right, guys, game two goes tomorrow night. It's another 8.05 first pitch, and I'm hoping to God doesn't go another 12 innings because I'll be exhausted again tomorrow. But... Game two goes tomorrow, like we said. Lance Lynn on the mound for the Texas Rangers. Three and two with a 5.45 ERA there for Texas. And as for the Blue Jays, we're assuming it's going to be Thomas Pannone. Uh, because you saw in that, uh, in, in the, when the Jays didn't score that run, so the top of the 12th, uh, before they scored the run, you saw Sam Gavilio warming up. So he, he would have been the next guy. That tells me that uh, Pannone will be getting the start there tomorrow. But... Again, I don't know what's going to happen. By the way, if you guys are still watching the video, thank you guys so much for that. And hey... Can we get some Ben Revere talk on here? Because 
As blue, I, I I loved Ben Revere when he's here when he was here. I think every Blue Jay fan did. He signed a minor league deal with this team. Our outfield is a big question mark. Maybe. I don't know. How about free Ben Revere or something like that? I mean, I get the guy up here. Wouldn't that be something? Bring that guy back. He. The funny thing is, he might be one of the only guys still on this team that was from the 2015 roster. Yet he got he got released the year after, or traded, I guess, and then brought back this year. That'd be something. I mean, I, uh, uh, Sanchez and Stroman and all that. But you guys know what I mean. I guess in the lineup perspective. But uh, it would be so cool to see Ben Revere back in the Blue Jays uniform here in Toronto. But, again, I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, I'm really happy they signed him. But how are your guys' thoughts on, on that whole situation? And where do you think he'll slot in, if anything? All right? So thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, that is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed the victory there today, smack that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the game, the video, uh, Trent Thorne's performance, the Blue Jays with runners, runners in scoring position today. Ugh, it was terrible. Also, the bullpen, Ken Giles, everything towards this team. Also, Nate Pearson get the call to double A. I know I talked about it yesterday, but I'm thinking about it again right now, and I can't Wait, Dave Pearson, man, that kid is something else. Throwing 100 at, at 22 years old. Yeah, I mean, he's 6'6". He dominated high A ball. He's looking to dominate double A. Ooh, I can't wait to watch some Nate Pearson. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but guys, the, like I said, hit the like button if you guys enjoyed this one. Hit the subscribe button. Comment. All that stuff. And Evan and I will talk to you guys podcast edition either Wednesday or Thursday this week. We're not so sure as of yet when that's going to be happening. All right, and guys, go check out Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. My main man, Mo Buckets, on Twitter. He's the guy who does all that stuff on Blue Jays Wave. If you do already follow him, great stuff. If you don't, go give him a follow there. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. Great, great content. Great guy. And it's, just, it's just really, really good stuff. He was one that broke it to me first about Nate Pearson. So... Kind of tells you how quick he is and how active he is uh, on on his Instagram page. So, guys, like I said, go check that out. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. And Twitter is also down below for the TO Sports Talk Twitter, of course. Link is in the description for the, for, for the Twitter. And, 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 you know, send me a DM, guys. Do all that great stuff. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place right now. I'm tired. I'm not feeling good. I got through this for you guys, but I'm just hanging in there. All right. So, guys, like I said... Twitter is also that all, all down below and all that. And I'll talk to you guys Raptors edition tomorrow nope, to Sunday afternoon as the Raptors look to get back into the series. And if they can win one in Philly and bring it back home 2-2, I think a lot of people will have a lot of different perspectives on the series. But if you lose, you go down 3-1. Very, very different scenario, all right? So we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out at Wells Fargo Center in Philly. All right, on Sunday afternoon. And as for the Blue Jays, guys, like we've said, game two of the three games set against the Texas Rangers goes tomorrow night, 8.05 first pitch there in Arlington. Lance Lynn on the mound for the Texas Rangers and probably Thomas Pannone for the Blue Jays. All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you guys then.